good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so now this is uh, fun with Jenkins on AWS. It's uh, based like uh, uh, parallelizing your test suits, uh, making like a uh, increasing productivity by reducing the your build time, your testing time, and always uh, like uh, use optimizing your cost on AWS. So any anyone in the audience who is using AWS, yeah, so that's good. And anyone of you using Ansible uh, for your provisioning tools? Uh, so less audience for Ansible, okay? So and. Uh, Anyone use ever worked on Erlang before? No, okay. But it most on it most, and I hope everyone is working on Jenkins. So uh, the the mostly it's all big about Jenkins and AWS and how Ansible came into the picture, how he like Ansible guided us towards like uh, increasing productivity here. So about me, I am. Uh, a uh, senior product engineer in Agda Energy. It's a Norwegian company. And uh, I work on Python and Erlang, mostly loves Vim, and, and also loves DevOps and ChatOps. And uh, uh, ChatOps is like uh, introducing your uh, DevOps systems with the chat and artificial intelligence and things. So what we gonna cover, it's like a it's a story of every developer. We build softwares, we test them, and then we run uh, on some CI servers to uh, and get some artifacts, get containers or uh, Kubernetes, and like all those things, and do everything. So, what we're gonna do? We test the app. How like uh, we gonna optimize there? How we run uh, Jenkins on AWS? So this will be first like a little bit salt and pepper, and then I will introduce some spices into the things. And uh, then how do you manage your AWS infrastructure? How you uh, configure uh, like the reduce the cost and increase your productivity and scaling your Jenkins? Uh, so it's like some of you might be like 20 percent of developers, or like some of you might be 50 people developer team or some of you might be 100 or more. So how you scale? Uh, so scaling is like uh, you can scale up or you can scale down always as per, as per your need. And always it end up, ends up at money, so how you reduce the cost for your development. So every story has a beginning. So this story always is also has a beginning. And this is how it all started. So this is our experience, what we did in our company, what we like, how we achieved things, uh, and uh, it's something like this. Uh, I de I developed an app and I tested on my local machines. This is how things start. You gonna run run some commands if you are on a uh, if you are a Python developers. You go you work on. Uh, Python uh, pep it, or you run flake it, and then you run Python unit test or uh, everything. So it's something like uh, you run it on machine. Now you want to run it on CI. You want to r run your test suits on Jenkins, on cloud. You want to move something to cloud. So first, just have a look on our app. It's a Erlang-based system, which use Erlang build tools and uh, and your deployments, but you don't need to be expert in Erlang or you don't need to know Erlang. It's just like a, for the con context, like how, what commands I'm going to use here. So, so first, first you build an app. You have certain tests to check your app. You have a Erlang build tool, common tools. You common test. You run your tests. Basically, you have some command to run your lint checks. Your Testing is happening properly, your lint is good. Uh, coding, to check your coding principles, like in a team we have uh, some coding guidelines. This is how we're going to code. This is how we're going to write documentation to test that. And even though, and in the last, to check, like uh, compile or some other uh, coding practices, uh, is there any not concurrency or if it's much more complex system. So all those, uh, so here, these are four. Commands uh, tests basically, uh, which I want to run for my system here, and this is uh, I want to optimize first this testing actually. So now 
I have to test. I am moving to the cloud. I am going to AWS. And this is how the AWS looks like. You have a, your AWS, archi like a VPC. You have, your, uh, you have your instances on the AWS cloud. And you have a Jenkins master there. And it's, pull, it's pulling from your uh, Git repository or Mercurial, whatever we, version control we are using. So the small, with the small Jenkins, they are like Jenkins worker. Uh, you decide, you define workers for uh, your ma on which command, which worker should run, or uh, like this. And Jenkins uh, and the, uh, Jenkins have the access to uh, all instances. It can uh, by it might be by SSH or some Java client or something. And uh, so now what we do, uh, we ran all those four test commands on uh, every single node. So it's like uh, on one instance, we are running all four commands. Like first we run build, uh, first we compile it, then we run the common tools, common tests, and then we run the lints, and then we run uh, some other uh, testing processes, uh, commands that we need. So it's like a sequential, and it's a lot of, it takes a lot of time, actually. It takes 40 minutes uh, to build everything. And if we are more developers, like, in uh, how much of uh, in any of your team does uh, like 40 minutes or 30 minutes is any it takes build time in any of your companies in any of your team like you push something it takes 30 minutes uh, minimum to build your uh, uh, code and then you like uh, run all the tests and everything so it for us also it was like this it was it took 40 minutes to run everything and we wanted to optimize it because you wait for 40 minutes, OK, some, and then something breaks. And then it's a mess again. It's, uh, then how can, the question is, like, how can we reduce the testing time? It's, uh, it is a, a one first problem of the big huddle, actually. So how we reduce the time? We parallelize the test cases. Actually, uh, it is uh, sounds uh, simple. It's it's not like a rocket science or something. It's very easy. Like you parallelize your test cases according to your needs, and then you reduce your test uh, testing time. Actually, so what we do, we have a four workers here, and we every worker every slave will run. Uh, each command, like one slave is running lint, one is running uh, like a common test, one is running your dialyzer, and something uh, and like this, because uh, you know, like uh, if uh, any any one of you worked on Node uh, npm and or something uh, Node uh, applications, then you need to install a specific uh, Node uh, dependency versions and everything, which takes a lot of time. So you can al also or create a dedicated uh, Jenkins worker which already has your dependencies, whatever you need, and you just need to fire a command. So uh, this is uh, how uh, you gonna you can optimize the process. And what we did achieved actually, we reduced uh, the test time to 20 minutes. It, from 40 minutes to the test pro time was 20 minutes. So time for a party. Like now we are doing. 20 minutes, uh, it's taking build, and are we happy? Like, it's, we achieved 50, we reduced the testing time by 50%. It's a big number. We should be happy. But no, we are not happy, actually. Why? If we, like, uh, if we are a team of 100 developers, and everyone, uh, and if we have only limited number of Jenkins uh, slaves or Jenkins worker, which runs some dedicated commands for your testing, it takes a lot of uh, waiting time, or if you spawn more slaves, it will take a lot of money. So anyways, you have to trade off versus uh, time and money. And if we, uh, we want to reduce time, we are bankrupt. We can't do anything more. So, And now here the spices comes in the picture. What can, how, now, how can we do better, better? As a developer, Always, we always ask, can we do better? Can we do better? And yes, we can do it. We, there is always a way to do uh, the, what we can improve. How can we improve the? So, we, so for now, from now, we reduce the 
testing time from 40 minutes to 20 minutes, but now we want to reduce the money on the AWS because you, at last you, it's all about money. Now the picture comes here for the cost optimization. How are you gonna optimize your cost? And how are we gonna do that? So here comes the magic element called Ansible. So for us, Ansible is a big savior. We use it for continuous provisioning, continuous integration, and continuous delivery. So how Ansible is, so, uh, any, so just for the context, Ansible is automated provisioning tool. It's uh, open source by Red Hat, and uh, it's in Python, and it's a uh, YAML-based provisioning tool. It's very English-based, plain, and simple. So how we used Ansible here? So uh, Ansible, we uh, let's see how we used Ansible actually. So uh, just for a recall, this is was our old AWS infrastructure for the Jenkins. What we did it, here, it's our Jenkins master. After we push, it runs set of commands on these uh, workers, and then it's uh, done. But this is shit, actually. It's it's not good. It's like the old ways. It's uh, like classical. Everyone uses this. It's what? How can we do it better? So now we gonna use some power of Ansible with Amazon. So AWS. Uh, so we use uh, AWS automation by Ansible. Uh, we have a lot of playbooks. I will show you a little example of the playbook that we have uh, for the. Amazon AWS, so we so we have instances for the Jenkins master and Jenkins worker. We create AMIs for out of them. So for the Jenkins master, we have a Jenkins server, Jenkins worker, Ansible, and the configurations are like uh, uh, what, how many uh, slaves are in the Jenkins? What are those IPs? So first we configure the Jenkins, and we take a snapshot of that instance. So it has all your Jenkins configurations. It has all your Ansible uh, access and Ansible uh, tools, whatever needed, and uh, everything is there. And similarly, for the worker, what we do, we have a Jenkins worker AMI. We spawned the AM, we created the AMI from the Jenkins worker instance, and uh, fix, and so there is the magic, actually fix IP, private IPs. So when we create AMIs, we don't change the private IPs uh, when we spawn the instances from this AMI. So uh, so, so it's uh, like, uh, suppose we have two workers. One is has a I, private IP is like 0, 0, 0, 0, and one is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And uh, we kill those instances or something. Uh, so it's just for example, like uh, easy to speak, actually, these IP addresses. Uh, so uh, you kill those when you spawn the new instances from the AMI, and uh, you will have the same IP addresses always, all the time. Uh, and those uh, IP addresses will be a, a same. We have the access, SSH access keys always the same. Uh, with the power of AMIs, we can save the credentials. We can um, we will get the same uh, SSH keys and the same configurations of the workers that we have. So. Uh, now, what what will happen now? So this is our one uh, scenario. We have a Jenkins master. Uh, Jen what will happen? So when someone push your uh, when someone push the code, Jenkins will pull the source code. It will detect the changes, and it will run your Ansible job. So what Ansible uh, playbook does actually? So uh, anyone of you using Blue Ocean's uh, Jenkins Blue Ocean plugin here? Yep. Uh, that's good. So uh, in Jenkins Blue Ocean, if you see, there is a pipeline code as a pipeline. So the first stage of that pipeline will be your setup infrastructure of your Jenkins. So you, so all the time, at any point of moment, you if nobody is pushing your code, you always have only one node called Jenkins Master on AWS. You are only paying for one instance, not for your workers, your anything. You only pay for one instance. So what Ansible does, Ansible uh, detects, so when you detect the change, Jenkins will trigger the uh, first stage of your pipeline. And then it will, uh, it will the first stage is always your, create your AWS infrastructure. So what we do, uh, Ansible will spawn the workers 
from the AMIs that we created, and we have the AMIs all, always uh, like with the configurations with the same, and the time of creating the AMIs from uh, this process is uh, around two minutes. If we have uh, fully configured AMIs, we do not need to do anything. It's two minutes here. And then uh, they, and each worker is tagged with uh, the, of what certain commands they should run, actually. And they run uh, their commands. The, uh, everything is, uh, looks good. They are running. After, after the uh, process is successful, they dump to S3. So either you can dump to S3, or you are building a container from it. You can push it to Docker registry, or whatever it's needed after this. You can uh, uh, do this. And after this, Ansible will destroy all your workers. It will kill all your uh, instances, whatever it is spawned. So you are only paying for those certain amount of minutes that you are really using. You are not paying for your, like you are not using. Uh, so uh, the workers will spawn when they need it, and the workers will get killed off. So uh, this is uh, the process uh, here. Uh, why Ansible is uh, doing here. And uh, uh, so now, uh, this is the, uh, oh my god. Uh, let me pull the source code here. Uh. Uh. Uh, is if everyone is able to see? Uh, yeah. So this is uh, something that uh, we use uh, Ansible. So this is a simple playbook in Ansible. What it does, it will get your key name, what key, uh, uh, what key, how you want to SSH, and which region, instance type. And uh, if you look on this line, image, AMI, here we, we define our custom AMI IDs that we have on Amazon Marketplace. So these custom AMI IDs are for the uh, Amazon. Uh, uh, so we, crea we created uh, these AMIs, and we have the AMI ID from those AMIs, and we put it here. And uh, we uh, then it's like uh, uh, then we define some subnet, uh, how many instances that we need, and if we want to assign public IP or something, it's uh, then it's rest of the thing. It's uh, very normal. So this is how we uh, create a, uh, instances on Ansible, and this is uh, uh, it spawn the workers. So if I do the like, uh, if I want exec count four or something or forty, I want. So for so for every playbook uh, you saw, we need four uh, instances. So with every playbook, we will launch four AMIs, four instances from the AMI. So the count will be four and. Uh, uh, after the everything is finished, the last step will be uh, you're destroying your infrastructure, and the easy step is like uh, just mark your state as a absent. So you do not need to write like uh, rocket science how you gonna delete your instance. At uh, first, you do a lot of research on creating instance, and then you have to do a lot of research on deleting instances on Amazon. It's uh, not uh, very difficult. You just, with the same uh, playbook, you just mark a state absent. It will delete those uh, instances that it already created. So this is uh, uh, how Ansible helped us. And uh, we use, uh, we are well, mostly dependent on Ansible for our CI processes also. It uh, try, so it uh, destroy infrastructure when needed. It creates infrastructure when needed. and. We are uh, saving a lot of money from it. And uh, the next thing is uh, the process. Just to remind what the process was like, you push the code. You, the Ansible will set up your infrastructure. It, it is the first stage of your pipeline if you are using Jenkins Blue Ocean. Or even though if you are using normal Jenkins, you can always add a first step as this process, which set up your infrastructure. You run your test. It, which is in parallel, and then 
you dump your artifacts wherever needed. It's uh, if you want to dump it on S3 or like some your containers on Docker registry, you can dump it. And this dumping thing, uh, either you can use Jenkins for this, but we use Ansible also for this. So uh, Ansible uh, sign uh, it's uh, sign your artifacts, then it push it to the, your registry or your S3 to make the security uh, as much as possible. And then after this, we destroy the infrastructure. So. Uh, and dumping, we uh, dump the logs on S3. We dump uh, artifacts to the Docker registry or everything. What we dump, and then we destroy all the workers that we have. And we always run Jenkins master all the time, not the workers, actually. And they, they are created when someone pushed, and they are destroyed after the tests are run. And then it's done. It's uh, uh, not too much uh, like uh, rocket science or something, but it's about. Uh, saving time and saving money. And can we use uh, some uh, more money on AWS? We can use spot instances on AWS, if anyone is aware on uh, spot instances, how uh, so you can always go with spot instances. And because you are not running it on for whole day or something, each instance is created, and uh, it, it is only uh, like uh, active for 20 minutes maximum, and then it's destroyed. So you are, uh, you are paying for 20 minutes uh, for the normal on-demand instances. And if you're going to reduce the money, uh, you can use spot instances, and Ansible will uh, able to create the spot instances from your AMIs. So uh, it's a lot of automation. and. Uh, for the uh, CI, we uh, we do not do anything manual. It's uh, uh, like uh, on AWS also, uh, the whole infrastructure is created by Ansible, destroyed by Ansible, monitored by Ansible, artifacts are dumped by Ansible, and uh, uh, it's uh, and what we achieved from this, uh, it's uh, reduced uh, the testing time. We uh, it was reduced testing time by fifty percent actually, from forty minutes to twenty minutes. And we reduced the AWS cost, actually. It was uh, uh, like uh, we reduced 20% of the uh, monthly cost of, of AWS by this process. And uh, due to the security reasons, I cannot show you the source code uh, for, for this. But if any one of you is interested in knowing the uh, process or how we going to do that, we can, uh, you can talk to me after the uh, talk. Uh, then I can show you. like. Uh, how we how we can do that so uh, using ansible there is a much more be benefit is like uh, you want to run it on cloud you want to run it on your on, on premise data center it's uh, just like uh, setting up multiple environments is very easy you do not need to uh, do anything like uh, uh, configuring again and again for different environments it's just the same configurations and it will work for any of the environments that you have so this is uh, uh, the thing, and yeah, yes. As, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, 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 it's uh, so. Uh, Local, local. It's uh, it depends on I think it organization to organization. If uh, someone wants to run on, in your case, in your case, you, you yeah. So I we save twenty percent of the uh, amount per month after this, and uh, the testing time is uh, uh, reduced uh, by twenty minutes. And uh, because we are we have our distributed systems uh, and. Yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, the if you are having on-premise uh, things, you do not uh, you already paid for whatever you have. If you destroy your VMs or if you destroy your machines, you are still paying for this. It's uh, not your money will reduce. And on cloud, 
the benefit is like you are paying for that service which are you are using uh, if you're only using one instance on the cloud you are only paying for that one instance you are not paying for the whole um, uh, money of the whole data center that amazon put to set it up so uh, uh, it's uh, on the cloud it's very easy it's very uh, cheap and uh, it's uh, like uh, i will say it's like uh, a big it will be more than 20% of uh, for the difference if we have local premise and on cloud data centers yeah Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, see uh, we had like a, a really distributed team, so we work 24 by 7, uh, and uh, we uh, do not have that feature to dis uh, delete our infrastructure in like every evening or every night. And we wanted to optimize more, like when we work, only then we are paying for the infrastructure, not uh, when we are not working. Because some days it might be happen, it's unproductive day, whole day is a meeting day, nobody is working, so, but we are still paying for that, and we didn't want that. So uh, for us, we were running uh, Jenkins all the time uh, with uh, two slaves, and now we are having, uh, uh, we save 20% of uh, money with, uh, uh, the, this new feature, and we reduce like uh, uh, we can make now faster deployments because our build and testing time is very sl like less. Uh, any more questions? Yeah. Yes, you were mentioning that you you had a IP address. In yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, the thing is, when we first set up the worker, uh, when we first set up the Jenkins master, uh, while configuring it, it uh, it's like uh, uh, we always have a maximum quota that how much money that we can pay for the maximum number of instances. So if we have like a uh, suppose uh, we have we had an estimation like we are 10 people team and uh, for 10 people we can have maximum 40 instances at one shot and uh, so based on that we created the list, list of 40 I private ips configured jenkins with uh, those things and deleted everything and uh, the and then whenever we launch uh, those instances will always have the private ips from that set of 40 ip addresses and uh, with Ansible, it's uh, uh, here you can do something like uh, uh, there is a private IP, and you can define uh, what private IP you you wanna have. One sixty eight dot uh, something like this. So uh, either and you can also uh, parameterize this, pick some uh, one from the set that you already defined, and this is how it can spawn the instances. So uh, uh, this is how we manage the fixed IP uh, uh, solutions for this. And uh, the spawning, spawning time is always like uh, uh, one minute, and maximum to maximum it was two minutes. Uh, it was like this. Any other questions? OK, thank you, guys.